Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Luminar 4 as a Lightroom plugin to replace the sky with one of your own skies. So we're inside a Lightroom and we have this original image which has a blah sky. And then inside a Lightroom, I have this sky image that I want to put into that image. And then we're going to do it and have them in Luminar 4. And when we come back in Lightroom, we're going to end up with this. If you want to use Luminar 4 as a Lightroom plugin to replace the sky, it's actually pretty straightforward if you're going to be using one of the skies that are already built into Luminar 4. On the other hand, if you want to use one of your own skies, it's a little more difficult. There's some other steps you have to go through to get that done. And that's what we're going to be covering today. Now I have this image here. It's that big rubber duck that's kind of world famous. It happened to be in Buffalo Harbor a few years ago. Unfortunately, when I got there to take the photo, it was the middle of the day. The light wasn't very good and the sky wasn't very interesting. So I want to send this image over to Luminar 4 to replace the sky. I also need to pick out a sky from my Lightroom library to use. Now what I suggest you do is take your main image and do any processing that you want to in Lightroom. Now I already did some processing to this image. And what I want to do now is I want to put it in a spot where I could easily find it. Um, to do that, you could uh, put it in a collection or you could use a quick collection. That's what I suggest you do. To use a quick collection, if you're not familiar, just go down over the postage stamp uh, version of the image down here in the film strip and just click on this little circle that appears when you hover over an image. So click on that little circle right there. That just added this image to the quick collection. Now if you go over to the library module and we go towards the top, you can see there's a quick collection right there. And if I click on that, there's our image. So it was very easy to separate from all those other images so I could easily find it. Now, what I like to do when I pick out a sky, I like the sky to match, match as closely as possible the color temperature of the original image and definitely match in the light direction. Here, this image is a little neutral, maybe a tiny bit warm, and the light was coming from my left as the photographer. So the light was over here. You can see how the uh, light on the rubber deck is brighter on the left, darker on the right. The grain elevators lit up here and dark over here. So we need a sky image to match that. Now I could jump over to my sky folder and start looking around. But what I find helps me is if I put this image in a secondary window so I could use it as reference. Now I recently covered this in a video where I've been covering, I've done a few videos where I cover kind of hidden features of Lightroom that a lot of people don't realize. And I just did a video on this. Uh, if you'd like to see that video and you're watching this on YouTube, on the right hand of the screen, on the screen, a little flag will pop out so you can watch it. I'll also link it at the end of the video and in the description below the video. So I want to add this to a secondary screen. To do that very easily, over here on the left hand side, you can see that it says one in two. Just click on two. Now we have the secondary screen up or secondary display and there is our duck. Now it's going to mirror right now whatever is in the main display. So I need to lock this. And you can see at the top here, it, click on locked. So we lock that. We could get rid of that panel, make give us a little more room. So now I could see what I'm doing. So now I'm going to go down in my Lightroom library to my skies folder. And I'm going to go here. And I really didn't do this ahead of time. So I'm just going to do it very quickly. I want to find something that will kind of match the light direction in a similar way and matching color temperature. Most of these sky images that I'm looking at now are a little too cool, but I'll adjust them to match better. And I should add, I recently purchased these sky images. I forgot the name of the photographer I purchased them from. I'm not affiliated with the, with the gentleman and I actually forgot his name. I'm, I don't know him personally, but I'll look it up. And if you're interested, I think there were 45 bucks or something like that. And you got 400 sky images and they're JPEGs. And I'll, uh, I have a link to that in the description below my video. And, and if that photographer uh, sees it, he could send me a coffee or something. Uh, but anyway, let's find a sky image that looks like it would look decent. 
And um, just real quick, let's say one of these two. The light is coming from the left, which it is on my main image. And it is maybe uh, way too cool. So we're going to fix that. So we're going to pick this image. And I'll just quickly add it to the Quick Collection again by clicking on that little circle there. Okay, so it's in the Quick, quick Collection, and I won't have to worry about losing it. We're going to jump over to the Develop Module, though. And I am going to, I think, just um, go to Exposure and make it brighter. That will help a lot. And then I'm going to maybe bring the highlights down just a little bit, um, open up the shadows a touch more. I think the blue is a little too blue, so I'm going to go to the HSL, and I'm going to go to Luminance, and I'm just going to make the blue a little brighter as well. So we just made it a lot brighter. And I think it overall, when it goes on this image of the duck, it'll look better, and then I could adjust it afterwards. I could make everything darker if I want to, or whatever. So I think that looks a little better. So I think that's good. Now I already have it in the Quick Collection. I'm going to go to my Secondary Display window, and I'm just going to close it. I'm going to go to Library Module, and I'm going to go back to our Quick Collection. I should have two images in there now. All right, so we have the sky image, and we have the duck. Now, if you were sending these over to Photoshop, it's super easy. Just click on one, uh, hold the Command or Control key to click on the second one. Command if you have a Mac, Control if you have a PC. Right-click on either of them, go up to Edit In, then down to Open as Layers in Photoshop. And that's super easy. Now, it's a little more difficult because we're working with uh, Luminar, and Luminar doesn't allow you to open them as layers in Luminar. So, <clears throat> I need to uh, know where this sky image is on my computer, but I did some processing to it. So what I really need to do is export it out of Lightroom, ind independently of the duck. So we're going to export this image out of Lightroom. So I'm going to hit Shift-Command-E to bring up the export dialog. If you have a PC, it's Shift-Control-E. And what I want to do is I want to send it as a JPEG. So we're going to change this to JPEG. And we're go not going to resize it. We could leave the resolution at 300. That won't matter. We're not, don't do any sharpening or anything like that. And I'm going to send it to the desktop. So we're going to send this process sky image. Remember, I made it brighter, basically. And I'm going to send it to my desktop so I know where it is. So I'm going to click on Export. So it's sending the processed image. You can see bim, right there. And if I minimize Lightroom for a second, there's our sky image. And you can see it's brighter now. This is the processed version of that image. Now we'll go back to Lightroom. And now we're going to go to the duck image. And we'll click on that. And I could you know, just bring it up like this if you want. Now I need to send this to Luminar 4. To do that, I'll just right click on the image. I could right click on the thumbnail at the bottom as well. Go down to Edit In and then down to Luminar 4. And this dialog box will pop up. And I have a default to do a TIFF, Profoto RGB, 16 bits per component, 360. You can change that to 300 to match the sky. It really doesn't matter, though. I'm just, I don't know, just the, I guess, the making it symmetrical or something. I don't know. I'm just being silly. It doesn't matter, though. Why I did that doesn't matter. So don't leave a comment below. You know that it doesn't matter. I know it doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, we're going to edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments because this is a RAW file, and it's going to be a TIFF. We're going to click Edit. So it's going to create the file. You can see the progress bar over in the top left-hand corner. So it's creating the TIFF file with those specifications, Profoto RGB, uh, 300 uh, PPI, and uh, whatever else I specified. And it's putting it in the Quick Collection, by the way. So it's automatically in the Quick Collection. And you'll see it's going to open up any second. There it is, into Luminar 4. Now, we have the looks along the bottom. We're not going to use those. And by the way, I got a few emails. My Luminar presets that I created a while ago, they work in Luminar 4 just fine. They're just, you just install them like you would any other look or preset, and they work fine. All right, uh, so we have the image now. We want to add that sky. The sky is on my desktop, remember? So we're going to go to this creative panel. We're going to go up to AI Sky Replacement. We're going to go to Sky Selection. We're going to go all the way to the bottom, load custom sky image. It's on my desktop. There it is, right there. And we'll click open. And it's going to put that sky magically in the scene. And I think it matches OK for doing it very quickly. So I, if you want to do any processing in Luminar on top of this, what you're going to need to do, though, let me warn you. OK, let's say the sky image is installed perfectly, which I think it is actually pretty good. 
Let's say we're going to go up to the uh, Essentials tab and I go to Light. What I want to make you aware of is if I come in here and I'm just going to pull exposure down, it's only going to affect the original image. It's not going to affect the sky at all. So if you want to do any processing in Luminar, what you need to do is add a stamped layer. It must be a stamped layer. So go up to where it says Layers, go to the plus sign, and create new stamp layer right there. Now again, this is only if you want to add some processing to this for some reason. All right, so we'll add this. You can see it's going to merge the two layers together and put that on top of the other layers. And just give it a second because uh, it's running very slowly. All right, so it's there. Now I could go to this light panel and I'll go to, or essentials panel, go to the light tab and I'll go to exposure again. And you can see now it's affecting everything, all right? So uh, just for the sake of argument, let's go to AI Enhance and turn the AI Enhance up. Enhance it. Now one reason, one kind of reason why I, I chose this image, you can see the water is all choppy. Um, a lot of people will say, well, you didn't reflect it in the water. When the water is real choppy, it doesn't really reflect. It will just be brighter in areas where the clouds are, and you know, really blurry brighter and then darker and really you can't tell that you know it's the original sky being reflected in this water if the water was still though then you're going to have to reflect those clouds in that and i did a video on how to do that and i'll have that linked in the description below this video as well as a matter of fact i'll have a little flag pop up here and that flag only pops up if you're watching this on youtube um, but i'll have that as well so you could check that out but in this case, we don't really need to have it reflect, all right? So uh, let's say, yeah, that's good. And we'll click Apply. So now what it's going to do, it's going to actually create this image. And it's going to uh, close, open up again in Lightroom. And there's one thing, I don't know it's, if it's going to do it. Sometimes Lightroom doesn't always see the edits. And um, hopefully it fails. So I could show you how to fix that. We'll know in a moment uh, once it does. Okay, eh, it saw the edits. If it didn't, uh, right here, well, it's doing it anyway. You can see right here, there's three lines and an arrow. Click on that, and then this comes up, and just click on this first box, Import Settings from Disk. Do that, and then it will show the edited version. Now you could do any processing you want in Lightroom from this point on, if you want. Uh, the sky still looks too blue to me. I don't know, maybe it's my eyes. Uh, but I think I'm going to go to here, and I'm going to go to uh, the blue and take saturation out of it. Nah, that doesn't look right either. I think I'll go to luminance. Still, it's not a perfect sky. It's more of a photographer fault, not so much the sky's fault. Because I didn't pick a sky that really matches perfectly. But you get the idea how to do it. So uh, in our quick collection, you can see we have the original sky image. We have the image that we just created, and then we have the original duck image right there. So that's how you go about using Luminar 4 as a Lightroom plugin to replace a sky of your own, not a sky that's built into Luminar. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.